Hi and welcome back to our HSMA E-Day uh, after sessions or post session interviews. I'm sitting here with Vuka Weber who's just given a session on Direct 4.0, the end of the PMS and why we need to rethink direct bookings. Now Wilco, <laughs> this, this could be opening a can of worms. So tell me, um, you've just spoken about that on, on the E-Stage. What would be some of the three key, well first of all, define Direct 4.0 for us, yep. please. And then what would be three key takeaways that you'd like to have for the audience that wasn't here today or for those that are watching? Okay, well to be honest with the 4.0 I just kind of used because it's a buzzword to make the headline more interesting. All right, gotcha. And it, it sounds more up to date. Um, but uh, basically what I think is actually we're, we're seeing this shift um, in technology and uh, what I think is fascinating about this industry uh, we've never been fast in adapting technology right. Uh, but right now while part of the industry is still let's say conservative in the adoption of new technologies and approaches part of the industry is gaining a competitive advantage by moving faster and I think that's a, that's a brilliant interesting time because it forces us to rethink the way we've been doing things and um, we have no other chance I mean there's so much um, disruption happening from the outside which we can't kind of it's out of our hands, it's not a plan, it's not a strategy, we have to do it, uh, so it's, it's an imperative. Um, and I think part of this moves us into a good way. We have been a very conservative um, industry in addressing technology. And the more or less only computer system that many of us knew was the PMS system. And this PMS system has become an abused monster of a system that we just plugged everything into. Now. Over years in those conferences, we've been complaining about things with the PMSs. But whenever we have an RFP, the number one item on the list is the PMS interface. So what I've tried today is like to, to kind of, let's say, engage a little bit or, or motivate to think that you don't have to put everything into that system. You can either decide that this system is your favorite system and you love it, and then you plug everything in, or you can decide that this system is a useful system for part of the things you have to do, but other things don't have to be in that, and then you try about to think about where could you put it. Um, and that thinking drives a new way of system architecture, which has nothing to do with PMS and CRS and all these technical descriptions. Um, and what I tried to introduce today is this, it's an old thinking, it was a white paper from me from 2015 or something, mm -hmm. the three sphere model, where we say we have the guest journey, we have an operation and an administrative sphere. And within this sphere, we've got tasks. And I don't want to think of system classes and interfaces. What I want to think is like, how can I optimize the processes in each of these three spheres? And how can I connect them in a most flexible way? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and by thinking like this, um, it's naturally changing the, uh, the architecture from this bottleneck where everything is just plugged onto this poor PMS. I really feel sorry for these systems. I mean, uh, we've been abusing them for many things that they're not good at. Uh, so let's get away from it and let's, let's redistribute the IT landscape and that gives great opportunity. Uh, and I think one of the first things is we've got the booking engine somewhere. There is absolutely no, it makes no sense that if I call the hotel or send an email that I get the reservation not from the booking engine but from a different system. Why don't I plug it into the right same system and uh, automize the answer, automize the booking process, the payment, the data, etc. Because I've got an existing system, I just got to use it. Yeah. But what we're doing is like we're using this if you find the website, but if you call us, we're using a completely different site, and we have tons of interfaces and and different kind of uh, hmm. email models and uh, HTML making it pretty and la la la. Uh, it does, just does, doesn't make sense. It's so, too messy, doesn't uh, it? So this rethinking, I mean, uh, and, and it's not a perfect solution, it's, but it's, it's, it's a kind of way of opening the box and say, let, let's think outside um, the classic uh, system classes that we have. Now, what is it that you're finding at the moment professionally mm -hmm. that's on your mind the most? What's keeping you up at night from a professional perspective in relation to the industry as a whole? Yeah. I mean, we're, we're, the industry is being severely challenged yeah. at the moment and I'm sure individuals like yourself are also, we all are in many ways being personally challenged from that. So I'd like to try to kind of dig into your little, your thoughts there around what's troubling you the most at the moment, professionally. Well, <laughs> well the, um there are these, these common things. There is this drop in demand where we never know how much of that is coming back. 
Um, I firmly believe it's coming back and it, there will be growth after a certain time, a point of time. But there is, there is a, more than just a few months that we have empty hotels, that we have oversized hotels, that we have too much capacity around trade shows, etc. cetera. Um, uh, so so the, the big question is like, um, are we just maintaining what we have? And then trying to, to kind of, in four years from now, just to use the product that was already old pre-COVID and think like, okay, the market's going to love it just because they have no other choice. Or are we changing part of these, let's say, uh, yeah, a bit standardized old-fashioned hotels. Um, the second thing is, of course, we, we've never been, or in, in many cases, we, we've not been an industry that has been treating employees uh, in a very good way. Mm. Uh, now we lost a lot of good people mm. to other industry sectors and they're not coming back. Um, so we cannot afford to continue to work like we did. We have to have a higher degree of automation uh, because we simply are lacking the people. And I think these, these two things are forcing us into a direction where digitalization is, is really important. And I think the fascinating thing that's really keeping me up, my entire career I've, been, I've had the pleasure of cross-pollinating between technology and, and, and like really better versions, labs, prototypes, etc., and luxury hospitality, because in Switzerland we have a lot of that. And the interesting thing is, like, on one side we see um, a, an industry which is highly adopted by, by budget hotel chains or by limited service hotels, because they had, no, they had no margin to do it other way. And on the other side we see the biggest opportunity in the luxury segment, but that's where the, the, the movement is the slowest. Uh, so I think this this force driving us to more digitalization, to more automation, has a huge potential for the luxury market. And um, that's something we have to capture. Uh, mm -hmm. So what's mm -hmm. keeping me up at night is, um, is not the worries about the industry. Uh, since our first talk, when we had the first lockdown, I've always believed that travel will return, travel mm -hmm. will come back. Mm -hmm. But what's keeping me up is like, how can we utilize the momentum of the situation um, in a good way? Sorry, long answer. No, it's, it's good because I, I also wanted to just tap into two things you mentioned there. And one of them is learnings from yeah. these experiences. You know, the, the industry's gone through crises before. Yeah. And some may criticize by saying we haven't really learned from those to the degree that perhaps we should have. Mm -hmm. Do you think that moving forward now, there's a different mindset, there's a different generation of hoteliers. Do you, do you think that the learnings will come faster this time? Do you think we'll start to maybe address the staffing issues and, and tend to the staff in a better way and make sure that they are um, cared for or, or taken care of better? And do you think we'll maximize the technology uh, yeah. that is available? Because at the moment, it doesn't seem like there's that, I mean, it is happening on a small degree, yes, but on a larger scale. Yeah. I tend to feel like it's just not really being captured. Well, my my fear and and my sarcastic way of looking at it is is like we're an industry that has never learned anything unless we were forced to. Uh, right. um, so we didn't really care about the internet before the OTAs forced us to. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't really care uh, about um, guest reviews and, unless these have become very popular. Um, and I think. As an industry, I'm not really sure whether we learn something or whether some of us are in a very conservative way, they're afraid of what's happening and they're using it as an excuse to preserve what they've always been doing. Uh, mm. so, so I think crisis also can, can drive, uh, on one end, uh, they, they drive brutal conservatism by just saying like, okay, we just do what my grandfather did when he built this hotel. And on the other side, it's like, uh, there's massive innovation. Um, and I want to be part of the second one, of yeah, course. Yeah. Um, but I think um, I'm, I'm optimistic about the return of travel. I'm totally skeptic that we as human beings learn anything from it. But what drives my optimism as well is that we have proven over the last 18 months what we have been able to achieve uh, in coping with the situation. Mm. And we've, we've introduced like thousands of new things. So if we only bundle the abilities and the willingness to, to change something, we've got everything it takes. And yeah. I think successful hoteliers will, will capture that and um, some will just overlook it. And uh, there, will be, there will be changes and shifts in the market. They mm. will be massive. Mm. And um, I, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if it hits those guys who are not moving. Yeah. yeah. Luca, it's always great sitting down with you. Thanks very much <laughs> for your time. Thank you.